Hello, I'm Julie from Elegant Sufficiency and today is the day that our first hatchlings of quail chicks are about to go outside into their new home. So this is their current setup where they've been living for nearly three weeks now since they hatched out of the incubator. Both the incubator and the brooder, the electric hen, are by Brincy, which is a UK make. So we put 12 eggs into the incubator and we now have eight chicks. So eight of them hatched, all of them healthy, all of them have grown really, really well. But they are feathering up nicely now and they're at a stage where they're ready to go outside to their permanent home. Ooh, that noise you can hear is our second hatch. So a few days ago we put um, some more eggs into the incubator. So this will be our second group of hatchlings. Uh, the plan is we're going to establish a breeding group between the two sets and start quail keeping from there. These bits and pieces in front here are some of the things that we're going to have um, to make sure that the quails have a nice, happy, enriched home out in their enclosure. Um, in a moment, I'll take you outside and I'll show you what their new setup is going to look like. Okay, so I'm outside now and I'm just going to show you the quail enclosure and what we've got for them for our setup and then in a little bit, once we've got it all set up for them, we're going to get those quail in there. So this is our setup. It is a six foot double hutch, um, which is actually quite a lot of space for quail. Quails don't really need an awful lot of space. Um, they tend to be ground dwelling birds. They don't really fly. They tend to pop or rocket if they're startled by something, um, but they don't actually fly in the way that other kind of flying birds do. So they really just need space to be able to um, you know, muck about on the ground really, but they actually need the height. The height is sort of optional if you have got the space for it. So that's the kind of thinking behind why we went for this option basically. And um, we've got it on a concrete slab, which was already in the garden. Um, and I think that's quite a nice thing for deterring rodents and vermin and things from getting near. Okay, so this hutch has drawers that pull out and they have a metal base which I believe is zinc and then somebody online advised me that I should probably coat them with something. Um, let me bring this camera in. So, last night I, it's difficult to see, um, last night I gave it a double coat of hammerite metal paint um, and this should ensure that the run um, the enclosure stays well maintained for quite a while because you don't want the ammonia to um, start to degrade the environment. So hopefully, I'm just showing you a black square now, this is really not exciting. <laughs> so hopefully um, that will keep it looking nice and also make it really easy to clean. So this hutch, like I said, it's six foot long um, and it comes with four of these pull out trays, so two on the top level um, and two on the bottom. And I chose that option because I really want to make my life easy when it comes to cleaning out, especially in the winter. So when you're planning about keeping new animals and you're thinking about what kind of environment to give them and um, what you'll need to do to look after them and manage their welfare, you really want to put yourselves, even if it's summer and you're on the beach thinking about it and planning this project, you really want to put yourself in, in your own shoes for when it's the middle of winter, it's really dark, you've got short days, it's rainy, you're probably getting home from work, you know, after it's gone dark and you've still got these jobs to do in the garden with um, the animals you're looking after. So think about that and think about what's going to make my life easier, what's going to make sure that I never feel that this is going to become too much of a chore. Um, and I think that could be why sometimes people will get excited about a new project, give it a go and then when it comes to winter time, um, start to kind of lose the love for it or even give up on it altogether because it's just too much work. So that's something that we had in mind when we chose our setup for our chickens. I'll do a separate chicken video. Um, and I'm really pleased with the choices we made there. So um, we aren't able to replicate those choices here, but we're really thinking about what's gonna make our lives easy in the winter because their welfare is the most important thing. For me personally, that's why we're doing this. Um, you know, I want to get away from, you know, supporting the intensive farming industry. That's really why I'm choosing to um, have livestock in my garden. So I need to make sure that the um, welfare of those animals is as high as I can possibly make it. And part of that is making sure that 
it's as easy as possible to keep those standards high in the worst of the weather. So that's the factor with having the trays that can pull out. We can tip those straight into the composters. Um, we can clean them down. We can get them dry really fast, especially with that painted coating on top. Because um, the last thing you want is to clean it and then have your animals in a damp environment in the winter. Um, and yeah, and hopefully it's well made. I'm quite happy with the purchase. The hut should last us quite a few years. So I'll show you what we've done um, to create a more enriched environment. My dog's about to bark. Oh, no, she's not barked. Tiny growl. We have a cat that likes to torment him on the fence and she likes to chase it. So um, I will show you the things that we have purchased so far to um, give them a really nice enriched environment. So this is something that people are probably already familiar with because you can get them very commonly in some well-known pet stores that I'm not going to advertise. Um, <laughs> but these are just, hey Kira, um, these are just sticks um, that have been wired together with really thick wire and they, you can mould them into any shape you like. So we're going to use them as hides um, and platforms for our quail to kind of tuck themselves under and hunch in in bad weather, um, sit on top of if they, if they fancy a view. Um, what we've got here, we've got two large drinkers. There's lots of different drinking systems you can use. I opted for this because I want something that is really low mess and really easy to change over in the winter time. Um, and then these will sit just underneath them to catch any drips. And apparently quail are really quick at picking up how to get the water out of these bottles. So it shouldn't be a hassle for them. Quail are incredibly messy animals, so anything you can do to minimise that mess is really important. And then here is the bedding that we put in. So we'll change this every single week. Um, and it's a lovely bedding, they can actually dust bathe in this stuff as well, they really enjoy it. It has been processed specifically for birds, so the dust has been extracted because birds can be quite, quite susceptible to uh, respiratory um, diseases and conditions. So minimising the dust in this is great. Um, it's also been heat treated um, and they claim it's biosecure, which is um, the best you can hope for really, because the last thing you want with the bedding that you choose is to um, accidentally start bringing in um, pests and diseases, mites especially, something um, I think in untreated straw, you can get mites hiding inside the straw. So really do think about the bedding that you're choosing um, for any kind of environment and animal that you're going to have. So what else have we got? We've got some plants. So we chose some plants that are shade loving. Um, this is one of my favourite plants actually. I often have it as a house plant. So when I saw you can have it as a garden plant I was really happy with that. It's um, a type of grass and it's a spiralis variety. I got it from one of our local garden centres. I chose this one just because I personally love the texture and it, it looks quite interesting. Um, whereas this one here, which is a Carex, um, again, it's just like a really standard grass and it's one that will bush out and spin out quite a lot um, and it can tolerate quite a bit of shade and is pretty hardy as well. So I think this one is going to be a really good choice um, to give the quail somewhere to hide and hopefully it should thrive in that environment too. This one I don't know too much about, but I just saw it and thought I quite liked the vibrancy of the variegated leaf. Um, and I think it will bring some brightness into the enclosure. So our, um, just because of the position of the house, our enclosure is on the north side of our house in the back garden. Um, so it doesn't get any direct sunlight, which is something that we've given a bit of thought to. So the plants that we're choosing have to be shade loving. So we've got a hosta here um, and we've got a fern as well. I do love ferns. This one may be too big to go in the enclosure, but we might just have it on the outside. So this is it. I have um, put some plants in, I've put the hides in. I've put the hosta up top here. And I've put the spiralis plant just here. It's so beautiful. I love the textures. I bought a whole roll of builders sacking. Um, just for jobs like this, little things that you can do around the garden, it's really useful. Um, I could even use it in a heat wave to shade the greenhouse. Um, but here, just stitched nicely, wrapped around these plastic pots. Um, it just gives a lovely finishing touch. So 
that's it for today, but I will edit this together tomorrow when I do the next bit of filming. Um, I made a bit of a faux pas and the water bottles that I bought were the wrong size, they're just too big and they don't really fit on the hutch. I did it because I wanted to give them um, an awful lot of water so that there was no risk of running out but we're going to have to go for slightly smaller bottles, still good sizes but ones that actually fit on the hutch. So the plan is we'll go and get those swapped over at the shop and then tomorrow when my children are home we'll put the quail into their new environment. Um, and I can't wait to show you that. I'm really excited to see how they adapt to the new space um, and how they explore and investigate and, um, and yeah, and settle in, to be honest. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so by the power of editing, um, we have brought you to part two of this video, which is the second day. And we are princesses. And you are princesses. Yeah, and Elsa, she's... Um, Rapunzel. Rapunzel, that's right. So we have Elsa and Rapunzel here. <laughs> Hang on a minute. We're Elsa and Rapunzel, we're Felicity and Seraphina. That's right. So we have Felicity and Seraphina here. We and have dresses. We have dresses. Yeah. Um, and yeah. we're going to let the quail chicks into their new environment today. Yeah. So the original plan was that we were going to give them new water bottles and I was going to get a new feeder as well. But cool. who's got mummy's bank card today? Daddy. Mm -hmm. Daddy. Daddy and yeah. he was at work and... <laughs> we went to Nana's for two days. So the girls are just back from being at the Nana's. We haven't seen her for about six months, I think. It must be about six months. Um, and I thought, given that we couldn't get the drinkers yesterday, it'd be nice to wait for the girls today anyway. And then um, we had the hiccup with me not having my bank card. Justin has that at work today. He's back at work now. Um, yay! Yay! But that meant I couldn't go shopping, so we're just going to make do with the drink and feeder that they have, which are perfectly good, but we want those for the brooder kit with lost Serafina. <laughs> uh, okay. I so, super hope that we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> right, the trouble is, um, it is illegal to release quail into the wild in the UK because they're not a native species, they are a farm species here. Um, so I need to be really, really careful to make sure that they go in and they okay. stay in. So let's see how this goes. Okay, I hope they don't fly away. So they're kind of like hopping. Okay, so she's going to get one out at a time. And put them in. Just trying to very, very distracting. like a yellow eyebrow kind of thing. That is the last of the baby colouring just going. So they, when they feather up, the feathers on their head are the last thing. Oh, it's so adorable. You can stroke them soon. I'm going to get this one in there, okay? I do not want to hurt you. They're already finding the whoa, <laughs> the water, aren't they? Oh, splashed a bit. That's me, mummy. Look, they they might be able to get up there. I wonder if they like they have... can get up there. They will. So they we've got have... two levels, have... and they should be able to use they both of them. Stairs. They should be able to they get up stairs. there somehow. They have stairs. They do. Have so stairs. there's like two left. These ones are very good at hiding at the back. Yeah. Oh, I'm so cute too. 
I just love quails because you can't exactly tell if they're chicks, but even though when they're adults, they look so cute. Yeah, because they like kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And they cheep a lot. Cheep, 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 cheep. Mommy. Oh, wow, 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 wow. It's do that hiding, isn't it, Mommy? It is. And you know what? I knew it would be. This is Bumblebee. Yes. I named it. Bumblebee is the only quail that has been, calm yourself down, has been named. Well, not the only one. I've named, like, loads of them. Okay, well, we're trying our best not to name them, aren't we? Because these well, are not I, pets. I, I just named them in my head without Mummy never knowing what she does. As long as I don't know what they're no. called, that's fine. What's going to be like? One of the tuxedos. Hey, Mummy, some of them have found out one of the hiding places just there. Uh, it? Oh, one's pecking the side. That's so adorable. I'm going to see if there's any up there. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I hope one finds their way up there. Well, some of them have found the water. Oh, that's great. Some of them have found a hiding place. That's great. And they're looking out their window. Are they really? Whereabouts are they? Look. <laughs> are you for the camera? Oh, yes, they have. <laughs> oh, look, a lot, in there. a lot of them have found it. That guy's like exploring a lot. I think that's the explorer. So long as it doesn't eat the whole plant, but they might do, it's possible to eat the plants. Okay. If they do, I'll have to have a bit of a rethink. Yeah, but if they eat the plants, that might be healthy for them. Well, yes, I mean, having some fresh greens would be nice, um, but I have to make sure they're the right kind of plants for them, yeah. if that's what we're going to use the plants for. So there you have it. Quail chicks have moved into their new home. They're beginning to get settled in. The girls have gone off to play into my front garden now. Um, and I'm going to clean out the brooder box and get it ready because in two weeks' time we're going to be doing this all over again. And hopefully, especially from spring into summer next year, we're going to be continuing to breed the quails. We're going to establish our own breeding group. Um, and it'll be our first big step into the world of micro farming. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope it's been interesting or possibly useful for you if it's something that you're thinking of doing. Um, if you like what you see and you'd like to see more of it, please do think about subscribing um, and please give a thumbs up on the like button as well. You can also keep up with us on Instagram. Um, I put lots of photos on there and also a few very short videos go onto there too. Um, and it's where I'm probably the most active. So please, if you're on Instagram, pop over there and see what we've been up to elsewhere in the garden. Take care, bye. <laughs>